Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, come to conduct our meditation. Not only my word or the word that we will give, the teaching that we are going to transfer onto you all, but may He make you understand in all its plenitude and greatness in order for you to know and have the understanding of what you have to choose for yourself. Because God, God has given us the Spirit, which is intelligence and reasoning and conscience, in order for us to be able to decide what's best for us in a way that pleases God, that pleases God. Of course, that when God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they didn't have to choose. There was no other choice but to have that relationship with God and have peace with themselves and to live the life God created in all His greatness and exuberance and power. A life that was perfect. They had a perfect life because in the garden, there was perfection. All over the earth there was perfection. Everything God created was good. However, when Adam and Eve fell into temptation to obey the word or the suggestion of Satan, then they had, Adam and Eve, they had the option to say, no, I'm not going to follow this way. I am not going to disobey the word of God. I am not going to disobey. I will continue following our lives here. We are going to continue on with our lives. However, when Eve inclined towards the tree and God of the fruit, it wasn't the devil that got the fruit and put it in her mouth. No, she took it and ate it and tried it. And afterwards, she gave it to Adam as well. And if you analyze it, you will verify that it wasn't the devil that took the fruit and put in Eve's hand. No, the devil just blew a thought, an idea. The devil brought to Eve a suggestion, a suggestion that she, she knew what she was doing. Because the devil told her, you are going to be like God, you are going to know good and evil. She didn't know evil. She didn't know what evil was. She only knew what was good, the best, peace. So, my dear friend, this is the process of work or the way the devil uses in order to lead people who are of God, who live in the church, who are faithful, who no longer live in sin. But he suggests, he says, do, look, do this. Or if you do this, that will happen and you are going to know more and so on. So the devil works with the power of the word of doubt. He works with doubt. Just as God works with faith, the word of faith, the devil works with the word of doubt. And that's how it happened there in heaven. You know that the kingdom of God the kingdom of evil, actually, the kingdom of hell started in heaven. It started with Lucifer himself. 
he was well, he was fine, he was one of the main angels. However, he also had, just like all the other angels, they have, he also had the right to choose as well and go against the Lord. So, Lucifer wanted to be like God, but he couldn't because God is self-sufficient. God is the creator. He is self-existent. He didn't have a mother or father. He wasn't created. No, he is self-existent. He is the beginning. He is the beginning and the end. And that's why Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and end. So, as the devil couldn't, and of course, he wasn't the devil yet, he was Lucifer, full of light, meaning full of light. But as he couldn't ascend into God's throne and be like God, then what did he do? He said to himself, I am going to create a kingdom, a kingdom in which I will be the king that will go against everything that the Lord, the Lord God does and is, which means everything that God was and is and will be for all eternity. Lucifer wanted to create the opposite. The opposite. That's it. When he decided to create the opposite to God, to be God's adversary, which means if God did something good, he was going to do something evil in turn. So he was cast out of heaven because of that. And, and with it, the third part of the angels as well. And the truth is that he convinced these angels that in his kingdom, everybody would live in a different way. They would have what the angels of God in heaven didn't have. They would have the freedom to do whatever they wanted. Freedom to be rebellious. Freedom to do whatever they wanted. And that's how the world is, right? In the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of this world is the kingdom of evil that does everything in order to oppose the kingdom of God. So the devil created this kingdom, he and the angels. So what did he want you to do? When he spoke to Adam and Eve, he suggested, look, if you eat from this fruit, if you try it, you are going to be like God. Look, you are going to be like God. You are going to know good and evil. You are going to know the other side, the opposite side of life. And she accepted that suggestion and fell. And Adam as well, and she led Adam to fall as well. So, the world was born like this, contrary to what God had planned. God only had planned what was good. They didn't have to choose anything in the Garden of Eden. They didn't have to make decision, oh, I'm going to go here or there, to the right or to the left. No, there was only one choice there. And when you only have one choice, you don't have to worry about anything. There is no doubt. You don't have to be trying to wonder like this, oh, which outfit am I going to wear, this one, the other, or that one, which tie am I going to use today? Yes or no? Think with me, isn't it like this? When you are in doubt of which outfit you are going to wear, which house you are going to buy, or which man you are going to be with, which woman you are going to be with, and so on, when you start to ask, it's because you are in doubt. And when you are in doubt, that's where evil lies. The devil uses doubts in order to drag people to his side. And that's how the kingdom of hell was born, the kingdom of evil.
And obviously, in order for people to be able to remain in the kingdom of God, they have to serve God exclusively and only to do God's will. That's all. Nothing else. You don't have to choose anything else. That's it. That's what God wants, so I'm going to obey Him. It's written here, so I'm going to do it. That's all. If you obey the Word of God, obviously that you are not going to have another option but to choose what is good because God will instruct you, uh, or our heart, He will lead, He will guide our heart. He is going to instruct, not guard our heart. What will guard our heart is our mind, our spirit. When we obey the Word of God, so the world already lies under the sway of the devil. And whoever is in the world, whoever lives in the world and is not according to the Word of God, is in the world, and whoever is in the world, they are in the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of evil, and that's why people suffer. That's why people suffer, and they suffer very much, a great deal. And what can be done? If they have the option to do what is right, why do they choose to do what is wrong? It's in their mind. Well, my friend, each person has to make their own choice. So, what I've seen that has been the most difficult thing for people to do in order to enter the kingdom of God is for them to let go, to let go of their will or of their desires, the lust of their heart. That's what is difficult. This testimony that we posted yesterday of Christiani, it's an excellent example, a magnificent example in order for each person to make a self-examination, to examine themselves and, and then they can see where they are going wrong and then make it right. Therefore, my friend, it's pointless for you to just know the Bible. You may know the whole Bible. It's pointless to know the whole Holy Scriptures. Lucifer knew everything, and still he rebelled against God. It was his decision. Eve had everything, Adam and Eve had everything, but they fell away. Why? Because they wanted to fall. They decided, and they decided here in their mind, moved by their heart, and obviously, you know what happened. God, my dear friend, sent Jesus to this world to save those who want, those who desire, those who are, let's say, sincere, even though they are living in sin, they are stealing, they are committing adultery, sleeping around, and so on. They are doing everything that is bad, but perhaps that person is sincere because they don't have another option. So Jesus came with the option for them to do good. As the devil came to bring the option of evil, Jesus came to give them the option to do good, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come to you, he said. But for you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to repent from your sins. You have to repent. And repentance is not a feeling, it's an attitude that you, you take. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. You determine. You determine not to do what you are doing wrong anymore. And that's when indeed you leave the kingdom of darkness, where you are under the yoke of darkness, the yoke of, of religion, the yoke of rebellion and religion as well the yoke of disobedience and rebelliousness to the yoke of serving the Lord, the only one who is Lord, the only one who is King and eternally Lord and eternal, the Almighty God. Therefore, my friend, in the kingdom of God, there has to be integrity, there has to be a correct life, a life of righteousness. I know that we live in a world of unrighteousness, 
but it does not matter how the world lives. We are not going to mix with it. We are going to live within the standards required to be in the kingdom of God. As God himself said, be holy for I am holy. And this holy means to be separate, separate from what is evil, from what is wrong. That's what it is to be holy. So, my friend, this depends on each person, on each and every one of us. Each person has to make their own decision. I made sure to put the testimony of Christiani here on Instagram to post it so that each one can make a self-analysis because whenever I put a testimony, I try to evaluate and check my own life through the light of God's Word. The kingdom of God has come to you. Whoever repents, whoever submits themselves and their will and their desire and they submit their life to the Lord Jesus, then this will enter the kingdom of God. But to remain there, you have to continue obeying until the end. You have to continue in the faith. And this is what faith is. This is what God wants us. He wants us to live within this pattern of the kingdom of good in order for you to be a person who does good, for you to be good itself wherever you go, in your house, with your family members, at work, on the streets, wherever you go, that you may be good itself, because this pleases God, okay? Tomorrow we are going to be here in the temple, especially at 7 a.m., which is the meeting of the first fruit, and also at 6 p.m. We are going to be with you here in the Temple of Solomon. May God bless you all, and I'll see you there in the name of Jesus. Amen.